you is two things, a fact-finding mission and a storytelling venture in which both parties agree to treat the story as truth. Being the writer means being the perpetrator of the myth, being its champion, its designer, its collaborator. The writer is implicit, an accessory to the crime. Rock stars are mythological creatures brought to life. A rock star is the point where a carefully contrived fiction fuses with an actual person. A person with a talent, a wardrobe, and a dream, all of which he or she wants to keep. A person with a past and a particular set of scars, which he or she wants to leave far, far behind. But rock stars are also self-made superheroes. Peter Parker's turned into Spider-Man because there comes a point when there's nothing left to do but climb the walls. What Bryn always wanted was to be part of the fiction. She's willing to be the getaway driver because, even though she was never going to be the one on stage, helping to secure the spotlight for other rock stars in the making also sealed Bryn's own fiction. Her own narrative about how she left behind a shy girl in a small town and became someone with a voice. Whatever. But suddenly there's a new story. The story behind the fiction, the backstory, the deeper story with its shadows and its bruises, its failures, its sour notes, its nuclear winters. There's a moment, usually right before the person on the other end picks up the phone when self-doubt descends like cloud cover and there's no way it's going to work. The questions are all wrong, the moment is all wrong, the room's too noisy and there's still more research to be done. Research to really understand the band, the sound, the nuances of the album. There's a moment sometimes, not always, three or four questions in when it's suddenly smooth and easy like talking to a friend, a favorite cousin at the family Christmas party. There's an instant amicability, inside jokes, a buoyant feeling of like. As in, he really likes me, this is cool, we'll meet at the show, we'll bond, we'll keep in touch. You might give me a shout out from the stage or maybe someday down the line include my name in the thank yous on an album. Of course all of that is ridiculous. There's a moment just after the call has ended when euphoria kicks in. It's done. It was good. Interesting quotes were obtained, but even better, there was a true sense of affinity, a connection. As in, this is the best band ever and they're so underappreciated. I'm going to write the story they deserve and get them their due recognition also absurd, but well-intentioned. There's a moment at the beginning of writing when the digital recording sits there on the computer screen 20 minutes long and daunting. The mind goes blank. What was said? And how many minutes of hearing one's own voice must be endured because, oh my god, I sound like a complete moron. Biggest geek on the planet. I love your album. Really? That's original. And so sincere. Jesus, just stop talking already, you stupid, over-caffeinated, chipmunk-sounding freak. There's a moment, somewhere around five minutes or seven minutes, or maybe it's nine minutes, when the recording reveals that the rock star on the other end is actually stuttering. Just a little bit. And it's kind of cute. Human, really. Deep breath, this isn't so bad after all. It's, it's actually going well. And, oh my god, he just laughed at my joke. A real laugh. I didn't even notice because I was too busy thinking about the next thing I was going to say, but I think he actually likes me. There's a moment when the story is almost done, like 600 words in, and suddenly it comes together, it shines, it sings, it's really, really good, and with a little polishing, a few words changed, it'll be almost perfect. Nothing's ever perfect, but some things are close. Close.